start today at the Mishnah on Daf Ayin Hey Yomud Beis in the bottom towards the bottom of the Yomud. Continue the halachas of uh, roasting the carbon Pesach. Noga b'chal social tanner. If when you roasted the carbon Pesach, so part of it touched the cheres, the earthenware of the oven. So what happens then? So it's not getting fully roasted from the fire. In that area where it touched the oven, so it's getting heated up from the walls of the oven. So yikloif es mekayma. You have to peel off that place because it's not roasted properly. Notav miroitvoy alacheres. What happens is if from the gravy of the carbon Pesach, as you're roasting it, so a lot of the gravy comes out and it goes on to the earthenware. And then the chazar elov, from that gravy that went on the earthenware of the oven, it went back onto the uh, carbon Pesach. So then it now got the, the gravy that got the heat from the, from the cheres, went back onto the carbon Pesach and it got heated up from the cheres. Yitel es mekaymai. So you have to remove that place. And here the mission doesn't just say that you have to peel it off. Peel it off is just a very thin layer. It says yitel es mekaymai. You have to take off that area. And the reason is because we're talking here about the gravy. It's fatty. And when it goes back onto the carbon Pesach, it penetrates much deeper. So you have to take off that area. Notav meiroitvoi ala If it dripped from the gravy of the carbon Pesach onto the um, onto flour. So now that uh, area that it went onto the flour, we're talking about, as Rashi says, the Gemara will explain, we're talking about boiling hot flour. So that gravy now got heated up from the boiling hot flour. So again, this gravy is not tzli from the fire, it's tzli from this hot flour. So what do you do then? Yikmoit es mekaima. You have to take, if you want to be able to eat from this flour, you have to take a kmitza, a fistful, to remove from that place to be able to eat from it. Sachoi b'shem and trume. If you uh, smear the carbon Pesach with oil from trume. So im chabur as kayanim. If it's a group of kayanim that are eating this carbon, so yeichlu, they can eat it. It's trume, the kayanim eat. Im shal yisrael. If it's yidin that are eaten, eating the carbon Pesach, so im chayhu, if they, they smear the animal with this oil while it's, and it's still not been roasted, it's still raw, yibichenu, <laughs> just wash it off, and then you can roast it. Vim tzliu, and if it was roasted, if it was, if it was already roasted, and that's when they uh, put the oil on it, so then yikloif es So you have to take off the outer layer. You have to peel off the outer layer in order to be able to eat it. Sochoi b'shemesh al maiseshenei. If you smeared it with the oil of maiseshenei, so lo yasenu domim al b'nei chabura. So that oil, you cannot uh, have the people of the chabura that are eating the carbon Pesach pay you participate in the payment of the oil, of the, of the Maise Shani. Why not? She'ein poidin Maise Shani b'Yerushalayim. The halach of Maise Shani is that only outside Yerushalayim do you redeem it for money, but once it's brought into Yerushalayim, you have to eat the, you have to eat the Maise Shani. You can't redeem it. So over here to sell the oil of this Maise Shani that the people of the group should pay for their participation in eating from this Maise Shani, it's like selling the Maise Shani in Yerushalayim, redeeming the Maise Shani in Yerushalayim. So you're not allowed to do that. It's been very difficult to, like, to monitor the whole time to see that nothing splashes. Absolutely. Nothing yeah, so you see, yeah, this is yet another detail of how difficult this is, that it have to make sure that it's in a way that it has to be roasted only from the fire. So now we begin a Gemara that we'll be discussing very fundamental halachas, Benigea to Yeridea, Achlal, not only regarding carbon Pesach, but regarding the, the Isra of, the, the, of things that are mentioned in Yeridea and Hilchas Taruvas. This is a very fundamental blot we're going to learn here today. Itma, we learned the following Machlaikis. Cham letoi cham. If you have something that's hot, that fell into something else which is hot. So Rashi says, let's say you have a piece of meat. Boiling hot piece of meat that fell into a pot of boiling hot milk. And when we say cham, we're talking about that cloud means it falls into a clear dish that's on the fire. So Divir Akail, every or Rashi gives another example, uh, something which is asr, a asr piece of meat uh, falls into a, or falls into something which is heter. So Divir Akail, everybody would agree, asr, that in such a case it absorbed because they were both hot, so they absorbed from each other. So the heter absorbed from the isr and it's going to be asr. If you have one thing that's cold, it falls into something else that's cold. Everybody says that that's allowed because it does not absorb from each other. If it's not hot, so then it's, it doesn't absorb. 
if something which is boiling hot falls into something which is cold, or the reverse, something which is cold falls something into hot. So the question is, what happens over here? One of them are, is hot. So what's the Allah? Rav Omar Ilah Gova. Rav says that the one that's on the top overpowers. That has a stronger effect. So what happens is, if the one that's on the top is Osir and it's hot, so then it enters into the thing that's cold, it's stronger, it overpowers what's cold, and it heats up what's at, what's, what's at the bottom and what's cold. And once it heats up what's on the bottom that's cold, so then it mixes, they mix them together. That's uh, Rav's opinion. Shmuel, Omar, Shmuel says, no, Tata Govar. The Tata is, is stronger. So if the one that's on the bottom is hot, so then that's going to heat up what fell into it. But if the one that's on the top is hot, so sh- according to Shmuel, what happens is when it falls in, the Tata is Govar. And if Tata is cold, so then it's going to cool off what fell in. Not, not uh, the reverse, it's going to cool off what fell in, and therefore they're not going to absorb from each other. So that's the, sh- the Shaila. What happens over here? When hot and cold come in contact with each other, do I say that the cold cooled off that was hot, so they don't absorb from each other? Or do I say, no, the reverse happens. What's hot heats up what was cold, and therefore they do absorb from each other. So Rav and Shmuel are arguing reg- regarding Rila and Tata. Rav says that the Ila is, is overpowers, and that uh, affects what's at the bottom. And Shmuel says, no, it's the opposite. The tatas go, what's at the bottom is stronger, and it affects what comes in from the top. Tanan. Tanan, we learned in the Mishnah. So what did it say in our Mishnah? So here the Gemara brings from a few different parts of our Mishnah to ask a question on Shmuel. So the Mishnah says, Notaf meroitvoy alacheres. From the gravy of the carbon Pesach, it fell onto, it dripped onto the earthenware. And then the Chazar Elof. And then it, it's, it went back up onto the carbon Pesach. So what do you do? It, it like splashed down, splashed down, and it went back up. So you have to remove that place of the carbon Pesach. So now, Kosal Kedaitoch, the Gemara was thinking at this point, the Cheres Tzinenes. We're talking about the carbon Pesach that dripped onto a piece of Cheres, and it was cold. And still, the, the Gemara says that when it splashes back up to the carbon Pesach, you have to remove that spot. According to Rav, that says that what's at the top has a stronger overpowering effect. It's understood why you have to, take, you have to remove that spot of the carbon Pesach. Because this is what happens. The Reitav drips down onto the cold Cheres and it's Ilah Govar. It heats it up. It heats up the Cheres when it comes in contact with it. Then, so now the, the, the gravy itself gets heat from this cheres that, that, that just got heated up. So now when this of splashes back up to the carbon Pesach, it comes out that the carbon Pesach is being roasted. Because of the heat of this cheres. The ilah overpowered the cheres and therefore the cheres is now hot. And it gets absorbed from the cheres. The point is that when the, when the gravy came in contact with the cheres, it absorbed from the cheres. Ilah gava means that what's ilah heats up what's at the bottom. So therefore it now ends up absorbing from the cheres. When it absorbed from the cheres and then it went back up to the carbon Pesach, so then it's getting heated up from the cheres. Verachmona, Maran the Teiris says, Tzliyesh that it has to be only roasted from fire. It can't be roasted from something else, so therefore you have to cut off that area of the carbon Pesach. However, Shmuel that says that what's at the bottom has a stronger effect. That cheres, which at this point we think is cold, even the tzayin, or if it's cold, as soon as the, as the gravy comes in contact with this cheres, that, that, so what's at the bottom has a stronger effect, it cools it off. So it doesn't get heated up from the cheres. On the contrary, the the, the reitiv cools off, gets cooled off from the cheres. So why if it splashes back up to the carbon pesach, do you have to remove that spot of the carbon pesach? So the Gemara says, like Rabbi Yirmiya said regarding the next part of the Mishnah, as well, the Gemara will quote in a moment, that what we're talking about over here is, Omashmol, instead of the name Omashmol, Besailus Risachas. When the Mishnah talks about the flour, it's talking about boiling hot flour. 
Here as well, when it says cheres, we're talking about boiling hot cheres, we're talking about the cheres of the oven itself, like it said in the beginning of the Mishnah. So if we're talking about the cheres of the oven, it's boiling hot. So there's no ilo govar and tato govar, just like the, the, the gravy is boiling hot, the cheres itself in its own right is boiling hot. What's the sailor doing there? Huh? What's the sailor doing there? I don't know, it's a good question. They're near the carbon paste, he was preparing, whatever, this is Silas, they're boiling hot Silas. Yeah, in but we're talking about Silas, if you could eat the Silas. Now the Gemara brings Takeh, where Rabbi Yirmi you said this, regarding the Silas, the next part of the Mishnah. And the Gemara goes through the exact same Indian. Tanan, so it said afterwards in the Mishnah, not of Mirait Vela Silas, it dripped from the gravy onto the flour. Yikmoitzis Mekaima, you have to take away a fistful from that place where the gravy fell onto the flour. Kosal we were thinking, Silas, say Nenes, that it's cold. Flour. So now, Bishloim al Rav, we understand according to Rav, the Omai law Gova, Rav says that what's at the top has a stronger effect. So, Mishumachi Yikmitz Esmekaimoy, that's why you have to take away from that place where the gravy fell onto the flour. Why? The Martach Lele Silas, because what happens is the, the gravy that's on the top heats up the, the flour as soon as it comes in contact with it. So, Mishumachi Yikmitz Esmekaimoy, so the Hodor, huh? The hader hadrine, so the hader hadrine, the hader silas umartach lele So what happens is it heats up the silas, and then the silas heats up the uh, the silas ends up also heating up the gravy. So the gravy is getting roasted not only from the flour, so, sorry, not only from the fire that is, it gets heated up from the flour, and then the kamatvi of machmas chamimusa the silas. So the 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 gravy gets heated up from the heat of the flour. So the gravy hits the flour, it, it heats up the flour, and then the, uh, the gravy gets absorbed from the hot flour. So the Vrachmon Omat Sli Eish, Veloit Sli Machmas Dovaracha. So the Taita says that it has to be heated only from the fire and not from something else. And here the flour that got heated up from the gravy now heats up the gravy. However, according to Shmuel, that says Tatogovar. So what happens? Silas, even the Tzenenesi, if the Silas is cold, Akurika Mekele. As soon as the gravy hits the flour, it cools it off. So Lamali Yikmetzes Why do you have to remove the place where the where it hit the gravy? There's nothing wrong. The gravy didn't get any effect from the flour at all. Adarabe, the the flour just cools it off. Rabbi Yirmiya, Rabbi Shmuel, so Rabbi Yirmiya said again, the name of Shmuel, that's what the Gemara was quoting before, Vesoyles Reisachas Tanan, that we're talking here about boiling hot flour. So therefore the gravy, as soon as it hits the flour, gets heated up from the flour. It's boiling hot flour, and therefore everybody agrees that you have to remove that place. Vesoyles Reisachas, that's it. Vesoyles Reisachas, it's uh, boiling hot flour. Tanan, what is the next thing it said in the mission is Sakhi Bishamishal Truma. So you put oil onto the carbon pesach, what kind of oil? Trum oil. Im Khabura's Kayanim, if it's a group of Kayanim, Yaichlu, they can eat it. Im Shal Yisrael, but if it's Yisraelim, Im Chayu, if it's still raw, Yidichanu, you just wash it off. Im Tsliu, but if it was already <coughs> roasted, Yikloif as a chitzen, so then you have to uh, peel off the outer layer. That's all. Only peel it off. So the question is, why is that enough to peel off the outer layer and not more than that? According to Rav, that says that what's, what's on the top has a stronger effect. So the oil is cold. So so therefore, what's on the top has a stronger effect. It cools off when it comes in contact with the carbon Pesach, it cools it off. So therefore, you don't have to uh, remove anything deeper than just one clip. As soon as it comes in contact, that place right there where it came in contact, so it, it, it's mixed over there. So you have to cut off one thin layer, but not more than that. Because the oil that you're putting on the carbon Pesach is cold. The carbon Pesach was roasted, it's hot, but the oil is cold. So therefore, what happens? As soon as it comes in contact, the oil cools off the carbon Pesach, not the reverse. The carbon Pesach does not heat up the oil. But you still have to take off a clipper. So here the Gemara, you see here from the Gemara that even if you say and it cools it off, but a clipper, at least a thin layer, you would have to take off. So that we understand according to Rav. Yeah, after, after he was toilet, he put oil on it. But Shmuel that says that what's at the bottom has a stronger effect. So what happens? As soon as you smear the oil onto this carbon Pesach, so the carbon Pesach itself is boiling hot. 
So then it gets absorbed because the carbon paste heats up the oil. And if it heats up the oil, then they absorb from each other. So on my Sagalebi clip, uh, why is it just enough to remove the outer peel of this? Nitzel legamri, it should be totally forbidden to eat this carbon paste for a Yisrael that has now the truma, the oil of truma that's absorbed in it. And says the Gemara, this case is different. Shani Sicha, when you're just putting some oil on it, it's different. The Mashu Baal Mehu. It's very little, it's a very thin layer of oil. The Mashu Baal Mehu Davidet. It's very little oil that you're placing on it. In such a case, even Shmuel will agree that the carbon Pesach does not have the Kayach to heat this up. It's a very. Um, Thin, thin layer of oil, so over here, it's gonna, the uh, is only gonna be Kadei Klippe. Right, so there's, a, there's different uh, discussions in Mepharshim exactly how little it is, if, uh, how, exactly what's the amount, I mean, it uh, has to be a uh, hundred times as much, the behemoth has to be large enough, a hundred times as much against that oil that you put on it. There's different shiurim that it says in Mepharshim. The point is, in such a case where there's so little that you're putting on it, so over here, everybody would agree. Now the Gemara brings from, uh, from two braises, where it clearly says, like Shmuel's opinion. And Rashi says that this is the reason why that over here we pass like Shmuel, even though usually the halacha is like Rav, by Benegeya to all in Yonam of Isurim, but over here, because there's two clear braises like Shmuel, we pass like Shmuel, that holds a Tato Gova. So Tanik Vasei the Shmuel, Cham Le Toicham, Hat falls into Hat, Oser. Chain Tsein Nishan Oser Le Toicham, Cold that falls into Hat, it's also Oser, exactly like Shmuel said, because Tato Gova. Cham Le Toich Tseinen, if the Hat falls into Cold, or Vitsein Le Toich Tseinen, or Cold into Cold, Madiach, you just wash it off. So now the Gemara asks the question, Cham Le Toich Tseinen, so what did we say, if Hat falls into Cold, Madiach, so it's enough just to cool, to, to just wash it off. Like the opinion of Shmuel, because Tato Gova, what's at the bottom, cools off what was hot. Kiv in the Chamu, but the Gemara asks, why would it be enough to just wash it off? Kiv in the Chamu, since what was at the top, what fell into what was cold, was hot, Ademekele, so true, Shmuel says that what's at the bottom cools it off. But until it cools it off, for that second when it cools it off, e f porta. It's impossible that what was hot and fell into what was cold did not get absorbed a little bit. So clip me any boy. At least a peel you should have to cut off. You should have to peel off, like the Gemara said before, when you get to the Mishnah, that even if you hold Tata Gavar and what's at the bottom is cold, but it, as it comes in contact, it does absorb a drop before it cools it off. So you should have to peel it off. There's actually another pshat, this is Rashi's pshat, there's another pshat in this Gemara when the Gemara says Ademekerle, the word Mekerle does not mean cold until it cools it off. Mekerle means that there's like a certain heaviness, that what's hot falls onto what's cold, so true what's at the bottom cools it off, but as it comes down with a certain pressure onto what's cold, it does have an effect, it does get absorbed a little bit. So how could it say that it's enough to just wash it off? So the Gemara Taka says, you're right, you have to change the Braise. Ele eima cham what's hot fell into what's cold, kailif. You have to, you have to peel it off. Tseinen only if both of the things that got mixed are cold, then midiach, then you can just wash it off. Another Braise that says clearly like Shmuel, Tan Yedach, it says in the Braise, Basar Resech, Shinof Lo Techol, of boiling hot meat, fell into a pot of milk, Reseach, also boiling hot milk, Vechein Tseinu Shinof Lo Techam, Boiling hot meat fell into, or again, a cold piece of meat fall, falls into cham, into co, a co, a hot milk. Also, like Shmuel said, that the bottom has the stronger effect and it's also. Cham lo teich tseinen, tseinen lo teich tseinen mediach. You just wash it off. So again, the Gemara asks the same question. Cham lo teich tseinen mediach. Something hot falls into something cold. Is it enough to just wash it off? Kivin the chamu. If it's hot, ademekele, until it cools it off, i efshud lebala purta. It's impossible that it shouldn't absorb a little bit. Clip me and buy it, so you should have to peel off at least one layer. So here as well, we have to change the brayse. Cham lutechtsayin and kailif, that if hot falls into cold, true, it cools it off, but it does absorb at least on one layer, the outer layer. So you have to peel it off. Only tsayin lutechtsayin, then mediach. If it's cold into cold, so then you wash it off. But now the Gemara is going to discuss this case. When you have cold, it falls into cold. Oh, my mar, so it said in the Braise, two things got mixed, cold and cold. Mediach, it's just enough to wash it off. That's only if what's cold, if these two things are not, it's not salted. If it was salted, awesome. So then, because it's something which is salty, so it does absorb, because it's sharp, it's salty, it has a kayak, just like something which is hot, and it absorbs. 
said, Meliach, something which is salted, Harehu So then it's like something which is boiling hot. There's actually a discussion in Mefarshim whether this case of Meliach, which is like something which is hot, the Machlekes of Rav and Shmuel regarding whether Ilah Gavar or Tata Gavar, whether, whether it applies to Meliach or not. The Gemara doesn't bring back that Machlekes, but could be that same Machlekes applies to this case of salty, whether the top one is salty, the bottom one is salty. So it's a Machlekes in Mepharshim about this. Another case which is similar to something which is hot, Kovosh Hareyu Kumavosho, famous klal, something which is marinated. It's also like it's been cooked, it's like it's boiling hot. Rashi's opinion is that kavosh is when you have two things, something which is mutter and asr, or let's say basar and tolov, <coughs> that have been marinated together in vinegar. It has to be kavosh dafkin, something which has a sharpness, like vinegar. Or other mafarshim say something similar to vinegar, but there are the that say that kavosh refers even to being marinated or soaked in water. If two things are together in water for 24 hours, that also is kavosh. So that's two opinions what kavosh means. Omarove, so Narove explains when we say that something is salty, what level of salty is that? So Hadam Ashmu Maliach Hare Kereseach, when we say that it's like it's boiling hot, that it's salted, that you can't eat it because it's so salted. Rashi actually explains it doesn't literally mean that you push it, can't take it into your mouth, that it's so salted. What it means is that it destroyed the taste. That you, can, you, don't, you don't want to eat it because it distorted the taste completely. That's what it means here. But just like when you salt food and you eat it, the salt is, is tasty, it, you can eat it, then like salt to that extent is not considered to be that it's maliach, that it's going to be like boiling hot. There was a pigeon, the nafal, the kada, the kimcha, that fell into a jug of kimcha. What's kimcha? This is the famous kutach dip. The kutach is the dip that they used in bubble, which had in it also milk. So a, a, a geisel, a, a pigeon, falls into milk. Sharye Ravchinene Berei de Ravim Mipashreinia. So this Ravchinene Berei de Ravim Mipashreinia said that it's allowed. So we're talking about a, a cold a piece of uh, meat. This geisela was a cold piece of meat that fell into this kutach dip, which is a salty dip. And he said that it's allowed. So Rav said, Man Who is wise enough to be mad to something like this? If not for the fact that Rav Chinna Berei Rav said this, the Gavre Rabbah, who he's a great person, he was able to say this heter. And Amalach, and he tells you that his heter is based on the following, like we said before. When did Shmuel say that if something is salty, it's like it's boiling hot. If it's so salted that it distorts the taste, you can't eat it because of the saltiness. Hi, nechel machmas milchay. That's not the case with this kutach. It has salt in it, but you eat it, it has the regular taste. Now, the Hani Mili, now the Gemara says, when we talk about things that are salted and it falls in it and, uh, and, and you could still eat it, Hani Mili, that's only chai. If we're, talk, if we're talking about something which was raw, that fell into uh, something which was salty. I will slee if it's something which was roasted, boy, clipper. So then you do have to remove a clipper, the outer shell. And the reason is because when something is roasted, it absorbs it quicker. It softens the meat and it absorbs quicker. Yeah, it's cold. Yeah. And we're, all, we're also talking about a piece of meat that doesn't have cracks in it. I will lesbe pili. But if what fell in has cracks in it, oster, then it will be oster because it goes into the cracks. And we eat and if the piece of meat is also spiced up, so then betabli with spices, oster will also be oster because it enters through the spices, soften the meat. This is the conclusion of this sugya, of this thing of law gova, tata gova, cham, tsoinen, hot, cold. Now the Gemara starts a new one Omarave or Omarav, Rav said, Basosh Chuta. If you have kosher meat, shechted meat, shoming, fat meat, shatzaloi, and you roasted it in Basan Avela, you roasted it in the same oven together with Basan Avela kochush, which is lean meat. Aser. So because you roasted it together in the same oven, it's going to be Aser. My time, what's the reason it's Aser? Mefatmi mea dodi. The aroma that's in the same oven, so they get a flavor from one another, and therefore, even though the non-kosher meat 
ha, is, is lean. It does l'chayre. It's not giving out any flavor, any aroma that's coming from it. But what Ashi says, what happens is that the kosher meat that has a very strong flavor and aroma from its fat goes into the non-kosher meat and then that brings out a flavor from the non-kosher meat and it goes back into the kosher meat. So therefore this is the concept of reicha milsihi, the aroma, the, the flavor that comes, even though they didn't touch each other at all, but the, the, the smell, the aroma that comes from the flavor of the non-kosher meat affects the kosher meat. So we're talking here even about a case where the bus and the veil is kochosh, it's lean. So obviously if it's the other way around, if it's fatty meat, the, the non-kosher meat, for sure it's going to be a problem. Levi Yomas, so Levi says that even in the reverse, a filibus the kochosh, even if the kosher meat was uh, lean, shetzalei and basa nevele shami, and you roasted that in the same oven together with a basa nevele which was fatty, mutter, it's still going to be allowed. My time at the reason is because Levi's opinion is reiche ba'almuhu, the flavor that comes from one to another is only an aroma, the reiche la milsehi. The reyach does not, is not something which is, has substance in it, it's just an aroma. And the iser is only if there's a substance that mixes. Right? Even we had before in the Gemara t- that uh, discussion, if you remember, tam uh, ki'ike, uh, if the tam, if the taste of something is like it itself. So that's when there's a tam, when there's actual taste. But the, the, the aroma is even less than that. And so the reyach is not significant enough to ask us something. So that's the machloikis here between Rav and Shmuel, whether the reyach is milsa, whether the reyach is significant enough. Ovid Levi Uvde, so Levi actually in practice did like his opinion, Bei Reish Galusa, by the house of the Reish Galusa, Begedi Vedavarache, there was one oven and they were roasting in it a Gedi, a, a, a goat meat, and Vedavarache, and, and, uh, from a Dovarache, from a Chazer, in the same oven, and he said it's okay, the Reach does not affect it. So to Gemara, Meisve, I'll ask you a question on this. It's, what did it say? It, what does it say in Hebrides um, regarding the carbon Pesach? Ain't soylen shnei psachim kechol. Not allowed to roast the two carbon uh, two carbon Pesachs together in the same oven. And why not? The Brisa says mepnei hatarevis because of the mixture between them. What's the issue of the mixture of the carbon Pesach? So one of the halachas of the carbon Pesach is lemenuyov. You're only allowed to eat the carbon Pesach that you're counted on. So it can't absorb anything from another carbon Pesach that you're not counted on. So my love, Tarev is timing. Isn't the Pshat that they get mixed the taste, the aroma that gets mixed from each other and therefore that's considered to be like a taste. The Reach is significant enough that it asks it. The Kashila Levi, this is a question on Levi's opinion that says that the Reach is not significant enough. Says the Gemara, Loi. The pshat and that price is mipnei tareves gufin. We're concerned if you roast them in the same oven, you might confuse them and give the wrong group a carbon pesach that's not theirs. It makes sense that this is what the Braisa means to say, that we're going to mix the actual carbon Pesach, not the mixture of the smell. It says in the end of that Braisa, Afile gedi utle. You're not allowed to roast two Karbanas Pesach in the same oven, even if you can distinguish between them. One is a goat and one is a lamb, so you can clearly see the difference between them. Even then, you're not allowed to roast them together. <coughs> so now, if you're going to say that the concern is that you might mix up the two Karbanas Pesach to give the wrong carbon Pesach to a group, so that's the Chiddush, even though it's a, it's a goat and a lamb, and you can clearly see the difference between them, we're still concerned that you'll mix it up. If the issue is that the flavor of the aroma that's being mixed when you roast them together, what difference does it make if it's a goat and a goat or a goat and a lamb? Either way, you have the aroma that comes from one to another. There should be no additional Chiddush in this. Elamai says the Gemara, Al Karachach Mipnei Tarevis Gufen Huda Aser. The Brais here is saying when you roast these two Karbanas Pesach, the only reason that it's Aser is it's a Gzerim and the Rabbanon that you might confuse the Karbanas Pesach. Avot Tarevis Taimim Shari. But the mixture of the aroma that comes from one to another, that's not an issue. If so, says the Gemara, lay metever to yuf to the Rav. So let this Brais be a refutation to Rav's opinion. Rav says that the issue is that there's an aroma that comes from one front to another. And it's very clear in this b'raise that that is not an issue. Um, Rabbi Yirmiye, says Rabbi Yirmiye, Hocha b'mayaskinon k'goy shetzoloi b'shtei k'deiris. The reason why the aroma that one gets from the other is not an issue is because it was, it was roasted in two different pots. So therefore they don't get aroma from another. Says the Gemara, that's what b'shtei k'deiris al k'daitoch. They were roasted in a pot. You're not allowed to roast the carbon Pesach in a pot, that has to be roasted in a fire. How could you say you put them in two separate pots? 
Ela eime, the pshat of here is, ke'en shtei k'deiris. He roasted it in the same oven, in the fire, but in a way that it's similar to two pots. So he has two fires with like a bunch of coals in the middle, sort of separating them. So therefore it's like in two separate pots, they're not close enough to each other and it's, it's separated with coals in between, that they don't get the taste from one another, even from the aroma. According to Rav, this is how you read this b'raise. You're not allowed to roast a two korbanas Pesach in the same oven because of the mixture. And my tarevis, when we say mixture, what's the issue? Tarevis time him. Like Rav's opinion that they do get the flavor from one another because of the aroma. And then the Braise says, so that even if you're going to separate them, you're going to put coals in the middle, and you're going to separate them like two pots, the leke tarevis time. So there's no issue that the taste, the flavor is coming from one another. Also, it's still going to be forbidden, mishum tarevis gufin, because we're afraid that you might confuse the Karbanis Pesach and give it to the wrong group of people. And and because of that concern, it's also, even if it's a goat and a lamb, we're still concerned that you might confuse them. So therefore, this b'raisa could be explained both according to Levi and according to Rav. Now the Gemara says, Omar of Mori, Ketanoi. It seems like that this machlekes of Rav and Levi is actually already a machlekes tanoim. Because it says in the b'raisa, or a Mishnah actually, Haroide pas chama, a person takes boiling hot bread out of the oven, venosno, and where did he place his bread? Al pi choves yayin shal truma. On the top of a barrel of wine, which is truma wine. So now, it's absorbing from that aroma from the wine that comes up into this bread. So Rabbi Meir says, yes, it's Oster. It does absorb from the aroma of the wine. And Rabbi Yudha Mata, Rabbi Yudha says, no, it doesn't absorb from that aroma from the wine. For Rabbi Yaisi, Rabbi Yaisi says, it depends what the bread is from. Rabbi Yaisi Mata B'Shochitin, Rabbi Yaisi says, if the bread is made from wheat flour, so then it's okay, because the wheat flour does not have the nature to draw the aroma into it. But by, by barley, bread that's made from <coughs> barley, that he says is not allowed. Because the nature of the barley bread is that it draws the aroma from the wine into it. So we see right over here, this is a clear Mishnah that's discussing this subject. Whether the aroma of the wine from Truma goes into the bread or not. So my love, Tanoi, don't you think that this argument of Rav and Levi is a clear machlekes Tanoim? The Mar Sovar Reiche Lav Milsihi. Rabbi Yehuda says that the aroma of the wine is not significant enough. So therefore the bread is okay. Or Mar Sovar, Rabbi Meir holds, and actually Rabbi Yaisi also will hold, that the aroma is significant. And therefore it's going to be awesome if you place it on top of the, the wine of Truma. So we have a clear machlekes here. So the Gemara says, Lelevi, according to Levi's opinion, that said, Reichelav Milsihi, that the aroma is not significant, Vadai Tanoihi. His opinion cannot be according to everybody. You clearly see over here that Rab Meir, Rab Yaisi, they both say that the aroma is going to be effective to acid it. So clearly, Rab Levi's opinion can't go according to everybody. Rav, the question now though is, according to Rav, Name it Tanoi, he should we say that Rav that says that the aroma is significant and if you roast two things in the same oven, it will be Aser. Should I say that Rav's opinion is dependent on a Machlaikas Tanoim here as well? And the reason why the Gemara, wh wh there's, a, there's a simple distinction here. We're not talking about two things that are being roasted in the same oven. Rav was saying, Reicha Milsahi, when two things are in the same oven. Here we're talking about taking hot bread and placing it on top of a barrel of wine. Maybe this case is different. Maybe over here the reason why, why those Tanoim, or uh, Rab, uh, Rab Yehuda, that held that it's Mutter, held that here there is no Reach. There's not enough of a Reach. Maybe he really agreed to Rav that Reicha is Milsahi, but it's not being roasted in the same oven. There's not enough of a reyach here. Therefore, it's going to be mutter. So the Gemara will explain this now. It's like the Gemara, Omaloch Rav. Rav will tell you, the Kula Alme Reiche Milsihi. Really, everybody agrees that when you do have an aroma that's going from one to another, it is significant and it asks it. And over here, it's different. Over here, their argument is, do you even have a reyach? Do you have enough of a reyach to ask it or not? So, La Vitman Allah, didn't we learn regarding the Pshat on this Mishnah, that he, Omar Abba Baba Chana, Omar Ish Lakish, that he explained when they argue and when they don't argue. Bepas Chama, if it's boiling hot bread, the Chav is Psucha, and it's an open barrel of wine, and you place the hot bread on, uh, directly on top of this open barrel of wine, Divriya Koyel Everybody would agree that it's Oser. 
because it definitely absorbs from the wine. Like Rav's opinion. If it's cold bread and it's a closed barrel of wine, everybody would agree in such a case it's, it doesn't absorb at all. It'll be mutter. When are they arguing? Ella, one of the two cases, either when it's boiling hot bread and it's a closed barrel, or it's cold bread and it's an open barrel of wine. And vaha nami kepas chama vachavis psucha damya. In such a case, it's similar to hot bread and a, a, a um, and an open barrel of uh, wine. That's the that's the machloikis over here. Whether it's whether we compare it or not. So in other words, what was the basis of the whole machloikis here? Not whether reicha milsa here or not. Everybody agrees to rav reicha is significant to aserit. The question is, in this case, when it's cold bread and an open barrel of wine, or hot bread and a closed barrel, is there enough reach coming out? Is there enough of a reach to even affect it or not? That's the machlekes. So it, it fits. Huh? That this case as well, the one that says that it's oser says that this case as well is similar to hot bread and an open barrel of wine, and therefore it will be oser. And the other opinion says that no, it's not. So the heat has nothing to do with the absorption. The heat definitely adds to the absorption. <coughs> so in a case where it's boiling hot bread and it's an open barrel of wine, for sure it absorbs. The aroma will affect it. If it's a hot bread, but it's closed barrel, so because it's a hot bread, it, it adds to, so it, it definitely adds, but there's two factors here. There's the factor of the heat of the bread and also the openness of the barrel of the wine. So the argument is, if you have only one and not the other, if there's enough of a reich here. So it has to be that the wine. Uh, maybe. I mean, because wine, I guess, is sharp, yeah. But could be it's from other things, from saying if it's oil or other things, it doesn't have necessarily that same sharp aroma that comes from it. Okay, and a chanami, possibly. We don't get the discussion of, of, of ilogo or tatogo over here at all. Right. right, right. We're talking about just the aroma. Right. Correct. So now, ilogo or tatogo is when they come in contact I with each other. When they come in contact with each other, so one cools off the other or heats up the other. Over there, it affects yes, it, it so changes it. But when you have an aroma, they never made contact. So it doesn't change the nature of the other thing. Only when they touch each other, it changes it. That's the discussion. Okay, let's finish off to the Mishnah. Toni Rav Kahane Bered Rav Chinen Asaba. Pas Sha'ofa in Sli Betanor. You bake bread in an oven together with uh, meat that was roasting there at the same time. Betanor. So that bread absorbed from the reyach of the of the basar. So now you can't eat it with the kutach, which is a uh, a dairy dip, right? The kutach dip. So this is l'chayr according to Levi's opinion because reicha milsihi, right? That's most rishonim say that this is Levi's opinion. Other rishonim say that even according to Levi, going back to Levi's opinion here, the entire sugya that says that reicha mil that reicha lav milsihi. Again, what did I say? So this is, when it says here that it's also, it's according to Rav's opinion, that says that the Reich affects it. But there's other Rishayim that say, even Levi that says that Reich Lav Milsihi, this is all B'diyevet. It's not L'chad Chila that you're allowed to do this. Even when it said before that there was a Gedi and a Dover Acher that was roasted together, Levi is not to all these things, only B'diyevet. Even, only like, huh? Milsa. Only B'diyevet, right. Okay, but that was only B'diyevet once it was done. So Levi was matter it. But Lichat Chila, to go ahead and do this, even Levi would agree. So therefore, in this case, if you have bread that was cooked together or baked together with uh, 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 meat in the oven, so Bidiyevet, it's, it's not considered to be Bidiyevet. You can still eat this bread, not with milk. So just stay away from eating it with milk. Another case the Gemara brings, Ahi, Binisa, Itve, Bahadi, Bisra. There was a piece of fish that was roasted in the same oven together with meat. So Rav also said you can't eat this fish together with kutach because it was roasted together with the meat and it got the aroma, it got the reyach of the meat. Mar Baravashi Omar, Mar Baravashi said, this fish, I fill it with milk Forget about the problem of eating it together with kutach. Don't eat it even just with salt. When you have fish and meat together, so then it's not good for the person, for the reyach, the reyach of the, of the mouth. It gives bad, bad, bad breath. And it also gives, Rashi says, tzaras. It can give you a rash. It's not healthy to eat fish and meat that are mixed with each other. This is the source of this Indian, that when we eat fish, you rinse out your mouth before you eat the meat, not to mix the two together. What's the milk with salt, he's saying, it's just, it's yeah, it's just to eat, even just to eat this fish itself, you don't yes. eat the fish at all.